Pod North Direction, I'm Dan Charis. My favorite Super Bowl prop bet, what kind of G rate is the coach going to get when he wins the Super Bowl? I'm going, I'm going with the, uh, eh, we'll save that actually. Pardon the interruption, I'm Jared Ware, and that is a good prop bet. Prop bet's one of the better aspects of the Super Bowl when your team's not in it for sure. Better than the commercials, I think. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Commercials way overrated. Yeah, Usually they're pretty awful. I think it's two minutes and 32 seconds over under for the National Anthem yep. by Alicia Keys. I don't know how, I feel like the National Anthem I'm going under two, like. I'm going under 232. Alicia Keys doesn't like to draw out her notes that much. She'll hit it really crisp, sharp. Under 232. Well, she starts with the piano. She'll probably be Yeah, piano. that actually, I didn't think you know, of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Depends. Okay. So, uh, Sam, can we get our first topic of the day? But before, before we get going, that, hashtag of the day, hog day afternoon. Maybe you've seen the Super Bowl 17 NFL Films 30 minute piece, which is just fantastic. They all dolphins, are. Dolphin skins in the Rose Bowl. Probably go check that out. Yes. Maybe if you have on demand. On demand follow on the NFL me Network. On my, follow me on Twitter at Dania Cheris in the warehouse at TH3 Warehouse. But on my Twitter, I uh, I got it uploaded to YouTube. Hopefully right. the NFL doesn't get mad at me. All right, first topic, Sam. All right, so the Bruins are off to their best start in like forty something years. Yep. Warehouse. What do you take away from that start? Well, it, it's good to get a. If this was a full hockey season, I would say all right, it's still early. It's good to be winning right out of the gates. But in the shortened season, got to pick up your points where you can get them. Get them early. A great start. Every point counts in this compressed season, and and this was really fun. You know, it's nice to see some of these longer seasons, like the NBA and hockey, get compressed down to where it's a shorter regular season because that's better. There's a little more drama for every game. I think it'll be exciting if you're a hockey fan to see these games. They're a little more important, uh, a little more important now. So pick up your points now, get into the playoffs, and we all know you can be the eight seed and win the Stanley Cup. Yeah. The Kings did it. Maybe not this year. Maybe a little less wear and tear on these guys' bodies. Maybe the cream of the crop will be, you know, will come to fruition in the playoffs a little more this year. So hot start. You gotta like it. Gotta get your high seed in going into the playoffs. I, I think it's great if you're a, if you're a Bruins fan. Yeah, I, I like where your head's at. I like the short and compressed season. You know, yeah. stay fresh. You know, you get games every other night. You, yeah. And then the Bruins seem to be winning every game, so you get excited. But you know, it's still a long way from the playoffs. Yeah. So I'm just gonna cool down a little bit. You know, they first place in the East right now, winning every game. Got good starts from Dougie Hamilton. How yeah. big is it? His name's Dougie. Yeah. Dougie. Yeah. Not gonna Dougie win them all. Not team. gonna win them all. Got to remember that. Not gonna. Oh, win definitely them all. not. And then uh, Hudobin played played well enough in goal to uh, to win. So a couple of young fresh faces who uh, who played pretty well. Got to look down the line though. I mean, it's just all about the playoffs and yeah. the start is nice, but I just can't take this team to another level until the playoffs start because yeah. it, we don't know what's gonna happen. Tuka Rask, you know, playoff goalie. Won a series and then faltered in the, yeah. in the next series. We all know what happened that year. Should we bring it back up? Probably not for you Bruins fans, but yeah. so be it. Uh, but, I, you know, who, the playoff goalies, you know, you just get hot. Yeah, and it's nice doing this sort of the shortened season where you can start these young guys, and if you don't end up winning the Stanley Cup, you can say, well, it, it's, is it a real season? It was really only 48 games, you know. If you win the Stanley Cup, you won the Stanley Cup. You're not going to let anyone and, take and it. Who, but if you don't win, yeah. you're going to say shortened season. And we, you know, we just lock com- out. Who com- cares? Completely forgot about Tim Thomas. Yeah. So I don't think there's one American on this Bruins team now. That's a good question. I wouldn't yeah. know off the top of my head. There is. Uh, our okay, director okay. Sam Allen, B super fan, saying yes, there is. All right. Second topic, Sam. Let's get it. Where do this? Where do the C's go now after the injury to Rajon Rondo, torn ACL? Is going to be done for the season. What do the C's do? It's it's not exactly uh, that terrible. I mean, I think the Celtics are, are terrible. Not terrible, but they're That's about five hundred. That's been your stance since they're, the first first PTR. Yeah. The C's are terrible. Did, did, you, did you hear me last episode? They're not going to win another title for yep. fifteen more years. And okay. This Rajon Rondo injury doesn't have any effect on them. They're an average team before he got hurt. They'll be average afterwards. They'll be a seven or eight seed in the playoffs. They'll lose in the first round. It's just what's going to happen. Yeah. But with this injury, you can maybe look to trade some of your pieces on the team now. It's, it's tough with the NBA. You can't. You don't have a lot of pieces to trade. I mean, yeah. Paul Pierce is the name everyone's throwing around. Yeah. I would like to see him stay forever green like Tommy Heinsohn. But some of those, it's a, it's a business. Some things yeah. like that don't happen. So if he gets traded... I, I won't be excited at all for who they get in return. I don't even know who it's going to be. Yeah, I, mean, I just I'm, won't be excited at all. And then if Tr- Rajon Rondo, I mean, he was a trade chip, but you going to get nothing for him really because yeah. he's pretty much a system player with the Celtics. So it's like, ah, you know, what are you going to do? So pretty much average team now, average afterwards. And, I mean, it's just not a good time to be a Celtics fan. 
Yeah, it, they're pretty average. I, I agree with you there. Uh, and, and when you look to trade, how much Raja, value? Rajon Rondo. How much value? I had to use the crispy side voice. Sorry, I had to interrupt you. How much value does Paul Pierce really get in the open market? How much value does Kevin Garnett have on the open on the open market? So what are you really going to get from those guys if you're going to trade them? Obviously, you'd like to get something, and, and you would. I, I just don't not franchise. You know, it's not going to turn your franchise around. Type moves if you trade those two guys. So really, where the Chiefs have to go for now is they have to say, we got this kid Jared Sullinger. We like. Rondo's out, but he's still young. We like him. Avery Bradley, he's got to get healthy. You know, shoulder injury. You know, we like him. So there's three pretty decent players, not superstars yet. Solinger could end up being pretty good. Bradley, pretty good. Rondo, obviously a star. So enough to attract guys. And you got to you got to look at this year's draft and say, well, Fab Mello, I think that's an idiotic pick. He's in the D League right now. Got to do, do better in the draft. This year in the draft, you're going to have to say, we got to get a guy who's going to play and be an instant impact, which is tough because most of these guys coming out of college are pretty average if you're outside of the top 13. Yeah, so. lottery pick, you're pretty much off. So really you're, you're saying we got to draft well or we got to pick guys up off free agency, but I think they got young pieces who, I don't know if they'd ever win a championship with those guys, but top, That's what it's all about. top four, top four in the NBA. That's uh, what it's all about. Top four in the East. No, it's true. The NBA's but, awful. With the super teams now, and they don't really have the pieces yet, they have a long way to go to get yeah, back yeah. towards that it's upper upper echelon. So, tough injury. Feel bad for a guy like Rondo, too. Great player. Keeps his mouth shut. Rajon Rondo. Topic number three, Sam. All right, so warehouse. We got a couple of guys whose names have been thrown around NBA-wise. Who would you rather see coming back? Greg Gordon, who a couple of teams have shown interest in, or Allen Iverson, who declined the invite to a developmental team for the Dallas Mavericks, I believe. Who would you rather see back, Odin, AI? I would say Odin in this situation. Al, I, w- I don't see what Allen Iverson will bring to any team if he comes back, and I, I don't think he's a different maker. Tail end of his career at best. Odin, injured all the time. And there's a good chance that he'll never be 100% healthy if you do sign him, which is a risk Oh, he'll, he'll, he'll get hurt in the first couple weeks. But if you're lucky and maybe you manage his minutes and, and you – you can come out and you say, you're not going to play every game, but we'll, we'll let you play 50, 55 games, something like that. Something weird like that where in those 55 games he comes in and maybe he's maybe he's just like an 8 points, 10, 12 rebound guy, something like that. It's not that bad. you know. He's not going to be in your starting five, but maybe he's in your rotation, limited minutes. If you're sitting, if I'm Greg Oden, I'm saying I could be off, uh, come off someone's bench, score 8 points, pull down 10 rebounds, 9 rebounds, something like that. Not a bad living in the NBA. <laughs> I'm going the other direction here. I'm going AI, the answer. Okay. Uh, not only because he's Philly's finest, but because I think he can help a team. He's old. We know that. I don't he has know. attitude problems. You know, so be it. But what he does have, he was a point guard in the NBA. He can't play point guard now in the NBA. Yeah, no. He's, he's too old. He's not a shooting guard either. So where are you and, putting him? And I think he can. I think he's still got some shot left in him. Yes. So all he can do is pretty much yes. n- not be close to Ray Allen. Yeah. But a player like that who just comes in and just shoots the ball, mm. I think it, I, I, think, I think a team could find some use out of Allen Iverson right now. Not to mention sales in your, in your jerseys, sales and tickets. You're not going to get that from Greg Oden. You're not going to get people going to the arena to see Greg Oden. You're going to get people to the arena to see Allen Iverson. I don't Iverson. know if you're going to get people to go see Allen Iverson. You'll see Allen. Oh, there'll, be, there'll be blue and, and uh, black Sixer jerseys at every NBA venue know. now. All those old. I don't think I don't think he's he's still that the same draw he was. I, I obviously it, it, you're, you're gonna get those blue you're and those. Get, you're gonna get. I think a those few, royal blue and those you're black still gonna jerseys. Get people, Allen Iverson jerseys from when he was in uh, when he was in Philadelphia. But if, if Odin comes out and he establishes himself, has a couple of good games, people are gonna say, "Well, this guy was a phenom in high school, and he was pretty good in college, and a, a big name guy." A lot of people know Greg Odin. He's this generation. You're not gonna go see Greg Odin though. He's not, I think I think he's not a good would. quote for the media either. Allen Iverson. He, he's going to have some good yeah, things. Yeah, because he say. says idiotic stuff. Well, what? I think people would go to see Odin if he came back. It would be a good feel-good story. It would get a lot of media attention. The yeah, guy but, was a number yeah, one but also, you go to the game, you don't even know if the guy's going to be playing the whole That's game. That's the same thing with play. Iverson. Yeah, yeah. He's not going to come in and play No, no, I'm saying with Odin, the guy can get hurt. And I go to see Greg Odin at this game. AI Five minutes in, he's hurt. I'll, I got 43 more minutes. I just got to sit here. AI I can come in and check up 100 shots and be awful. Yeah, then you can boo them, and it's more of an enjoyment for you. Yeah. Don't you like booing players? No, I. Yeah, I don't need really. Um. Yeah, I think Odin. I think Odin would could be just as big of a draw as Allen. No, no way. I Not think a so. Chance. Not a chance. 
AI was the I man. disagree with you 100% right now. I do. AI I think was Odin, one of the guys that had to carry the Yeah, and Odin, was, Odin is Jordan. one of the biggest busts of all time, which I uh, Yeah, but you know, nobody cares bust, about the NBA. But if he came back, people would get excited about that. A lot of people know Greg Odin. I think a lot of people outside of the NBA right now or NBA fans know nah, Greg Odin as well. He doesn't, I can, have his I, own, he doesn't have his own shoe. Alan Iverson yeah. did. What, is, what does that have to do with people outside of sport knowing him? A lot of people know that he's one of the biggest busts of this generation in any draft. Yeah, I, I, AI is a bigger draw. So I disagree all, right now. All these kids who grew up wearing those Allen Iverson I, sneakers with Allen Iverson's face and the soul of it, they're I gonna go see Allen Iverson. I, I disagree. Greg Oden never had that, never had that going for him. Yeah, but I th I think people would go watch Greg Oden more than they go watch AI. No, no, no. No, I think you are no, wrong. No, no. Everyone no, wants to go fine. back You're to wrong. the good old days. Hey, Dan's everyone, wrong. That's everyone fine. wants to go back to the good old days. AI was in the good he old did, days. He would be people. awful. I don't understand why people would go see him. He was a legend. He was a hero to many he people. He was a legend. Was was Greg was ever a, a hero legend. or a legend to people? Was a legend. I Greg Oden was never that. that. Unless you went to I don't think Indianapolis High School it. or whatever. I don't think people would watch that. We're right. talking about practice. Thank you. It's a great one-liner. I don't think people would go see him. Well, they would go see him, but I just think it, the draw would be j about the same. Okay. Well, let's just move on to the next topic. Okay. Thanks, Sam, for putting that up while we were still debating. Okay. Great basketball season coming down, final few games. How do you see it turn out for the men's and the women's squad? Obviously, the men's more than likely should win the LEC, should host the, uh, the, the LEC tournament. They're going to get into the NCAA tournament at this point. They have a pretty good win, MIT, even though they're outside of the top 25 at this point. And uh, a tough home loss to Amherst, but still a good game to play out of your conference in the middle of the season. So I think they've done enough, and it does, it does help that they're a known program nationally. Been to the NCAA tournament six or seven times in a row. I don't remember. Their coach makes television appearances. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I think they'll get in. I think they'll be fine there. And that's really what that program really cares about. I think Coach Wall said they don't really – they do care about the LEC, winning the LEC, but they're focused on the NCAA tournament. They'll be in there. So they're fine. The women's team right now, big game Saturday against UMass Boston. They're in fifth place right now. At one point, they were tied for second in the LEC just a few games ago. Hit a little rough patch. Have to figure things out. The U.S. Boston's pretty good. A tough team. They push some teams. Two good players inside, Kirsten Morrison and Olivia Murphy. Olivia Murphy will be Rookie of the Year in the LEC easily. Might even be first team LEC and Rookie of the Year, which will be unbelievably impressive. So it's going to be a tough game. Still got games against West on the road. Still got a game against Southern Maine at home. Still have to go up, uh, up to Keene. So things are a little shaky there. I see them finishing probably as the fifth seed. I don't know if they're going to move up. I think they'll stay right where they are. They could get a little help from East Con, but... Five seed, I could see them winning their first game on that Tuesday, and they're a pretty good team. They play well, could make the final of the LEC tournament, probably have to win the LEC tournament to get into the NCAA yeah, tournament definitely. at this point. So is it doable? Yes. Got to play some good basketball to get there. All right, so, yeah, like you were saying, the men's team, they're in a great position to win the LEC. I'm really rooting for them. Yeah. Really want them to win the LEC, have a couple games, or yeah. at least one game. Yeah. The, the host, the semifinals, yeah. and the finals. But to get into the finals, I mean, there's two games right there, so a couple of times I can enjoy myself watching some good basketball. LEC basketball is probably, after the NESCAC, probably the best conference in the country. NESCAC has Amherst, yep, Williams, yep. Middlebury, all those okay. teams every year. So, women's side, yeah, we were looking at them like, these girls could be the two seed. Who would have yeah, thought? Which would, would have been, this was know. like a week ago. Then they lose yep. at home to West Con. Turns out West Con's definitely good. a two or a one seed. I mean, they beat Southern Maine last week. Yeah. So, Rick is definitely on the outside of the one and the two, yeah. and then they lose again, and it's like now we're the fifth. Now Rick's the yeah. fifth seed, so it's like uh, I don't know what to place this team. I'm right with you with the fifth seed for this team, fifth seed in the LEC tournament. Uh, that would probably put them in a position to play maybe EastCon, who they beat, or it would uh, be in EastCon though where in, they in lost. East Con, so. In EastCon, uh, but it was but a two-point two point ball game, game yeah. and uh, yeah, so I'm going fifth seed for the Rick women's team. Guys, like there's tough said, to play in though. But yes, like you said. It's going to be tough yeah. to win on the road and then have to go to Southern Maine and beat the class of the Lilies Conference since the Lilies has been a conference. So, yeah. uh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this woman's I team. I think a lot, a lot riding on Saturdays uh, on Saturdays. But game. they got this they got be, some some areas to, be, to be good down in the future. We'll just say that. Oh, oh, for sure. Teams got a lot. I mean, and let's think about it. When they were in second place, second, third place, that was a surprise. You lose four out of five of your starters in your yeah. back. Pretty, pretty decent conference. You're in second place. A little bit of a surprise. Sitting in fifth place is probably where we expected them to finish that fourth, fifth range. So even okay. though even though they've slid down, still pretty much meeting expectations coming into the season. All right. 
Next topic. Sam already did. Sam's on our game today. Aussie Open finished up last week. Final thought. What are your final thoughts on the Aussie final Open? Final thoughts. Congrats to Azarenka. Yep. Vika. Yep. Mrs. Red Fu. Surprising. Probably. Surprising, surprising. I can't watch her play because she's loud and annoying. Same with Sharapova. That is true. It's a, a topic for another day. Yes, another topic for another day. And then on the men's side, I mean, whoever's the one seed pretty much wins these events. Novak Djokovic. Congratulations. Uh, but my thoughts, final thoughts, is just on the status of American tennis. Yeah. Women's. You know, we thought Serena was going to maybe get it done. Faltered to Sloane Stevens, an up-and-coming American. So we got good hands in the women's game yep. coming up, these young Americans. On the men's side, couldn't, this is probably the lowest point of U.S. men's tennis of all time. Your top seed going into it was Sam Querrey, who was like 25th. 22. 22, thank you. Pretty well, he's bad. like 25th, but isn't yeah, had to drop seed. off. I don't know seed. what on earth Marty Fish is up to these yep. days. James Blake, that guy's been a, a, not a good tennis player for the last, like, three, four yeah. years. Andy Roddick retires. Uh, Ryan Harrison has draw issues, not to mention his mental instability yeah. on the court. Yeah. Uh, who am I missing out? Uh, I think you hit most of them. Like Michael Russell's in, but Michael, Michael Russell's like 32 uh, years old. Not going to uh, beat anyone. Brian Baker. Who's, yeah. But congratulations to the Brian Bros who yeah. won. I predicted that last week. Doubles is in good hands. Like we said, what, in the Olympics, there was five tennis medals. The U.S. won three of them. Yep. Yeah. Serena, the Brian Bros, and then um, the, the Williams sisters. Yep. So you're like three out of five. U.S. tennis is rolling. Yeah. Turns out men's is which is the most draw. U.S. men's awful. So we got nobody coming up, no prospects whatsoever. And then mixed doubles. I mean, mixed doubles is just a fluky thing. That yeah. it's just like let's add another Olympic event. Yep. So U.S. men's tennis awful. Not looking any better. U.S. women's tennis, the Williams sisters decline. We got a new fresh crop of good American woman to take over. Yeah, no, I have to I have to agree with you. Women's tennis is in is in a great spot right now. Men's tennis is awful. About opposite as far on the opposite end of the spectrum as you can get. Because when you look at the women's game, you mentioned Sloane Stevens. She's 19 years old. I, she may be 20, but 19, 20. Madison Keys. A lot of players starting to. I mean. All the analysts on ESPN were saying she's going to be number one in the future. They also said that after Stevens beat Williams, she would become number one in the future as well. So those guys will be going at it well, in the top tennis five. Is a new, it seems like there should be a new number one all the time, but yeah. it's always Azarenka. And they like, yeah, made a huge deal. Azarenka will stay number one after the Australian Open. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, but Serena's US, the best player in the world. Yeah, league. USA Tennis, it's in a great place because you've still got a few more good years out of Serena. Yeah. Obviously, she's going to get hurt. She's going to break down nearing 30. It's, it's fine. Expected. But... Stevens looks excellent. Looks like a great prospect. As I said, Madison Keys looks like a great prospect. Christine McHale, yeah. she could be pretty good if she could be more consistent. Or she was in the top thirty. Yeah, she's a, she's a solid she's only player. 20, so it's pretty yeah, good. exactly. All these great players, super young. Now, Melody you look at the Dan. Yeah, made that one run, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did she lose in the first round? Yeah, I think she did. Okay. Now, looking at the men's side, as you said, we got a lot of guys on the wrong side of thirty. A lot of guys getting hurt all the time. A lot of guys who play bad tennis. The only prospect who was in the Aussie Open for the men's, Ryan Harrison, who finally got out of the first round of the Aussie Open, yeah. which usually he gets like a top five guy in his first round, yeah. which is like, obviously he's going to lose. Why can't this guy get like some lucky loser or some other unseated guy? Where yeah. he at least win some a of match. these first round matches are really, really poor matches. Which, the draws guys yeah. just bless them. Well, so, yeah, Harrison has been, and he always gets it. He's always playing Djokovic, Murray, Federer, Nadal, something like that, where it's like, all right, if you win a set, or you win like four games in a set, <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah. But just looking. It turns out he has Djokovic in the second round. Yeah, so exactly. He just, and he gets blown loss. out. People yeah. were just hoping he'd win a set. Obviously didn't. But U.S. men's tennis, I don't know if uh, what is going on there. Not a lot of hope around that. I it know is, you always hear. It's been declined for a while. Oh, for a long in time. In 2008, I believe, it was the first time like ever a U.S. men didn't make the quarterfinals yeah, of the U.S. You, you, you always hear the McEnroe brothers talking about it and how hard Pat's working at the USTA, but the results are not there, and it doesn't look like it's getting any better anytime soon. So it'll be interesting to see where men's tennis goes from here. Do we have a superstar somewhere? I don't know. Okay. What are we looking forward to? The hexagonal. World Cup qualifying for the USA starts next week, I believe, in Honduras. 3 p.m. on Be In Sport for everyone who needs to know. Where if you have been, if you're one of the eight people stateside who has Be In Sports. Or if you're available at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Yeah, exactly. And they actually, it was a good point made, I saw on Twitter last night from Grant Wall. How frustrating is it that you can turn on ESPN next week and see Mexico's 
World Cup qualifier, but uh, you can't see the United States. Don't get me started States. on that. Makes no sense. It's so idiotic. Don't get me started on that stupid ESPN Mexico now, deal. Now, what are we looking forward to next week in this first game? First of all, lineup going to be interesting. We had that game against Canada, but none of the real, none of the real the solid starters were there. But you'll see Dempsey. Will we see Altidore in the starting lineup? That'll be interesting. I wouldn't mind seeing Josh Gatt. Maybe start on the right wing. Pretty good speed. Look, he was Speedster. out. He was out on the left. Can't use his left foot at all. So if you're going to oh, start him, he's got to be on the right. But do you take Graham Zusi off the right wing? Maybe you put Graham Zusi in the middle. Interesting things there for Klinsman. Fabian Johnson. He's been a little hurt, a little nicked up in the in the Bundesliga. It'll be interesting to see if he comes in because he's usually a, a consistently star. top three best player on the field for the United States when we play. So he's going to be key. Have to go on the road, Honduras. Tough place to play, but you got to get three points here. I think the USA is going to get the win, probably two to one, which is a huge goal output yeah. for this USA team. But I think Altidore in good form, Dempsey getting better each week uh, for Tottenham. Two goals. I'm not saying those two guys are going to score, but I think there'll be yeah, two goals yeah. in this game somewhere. Also, interesting to see if Omar Gonzalez, maybe he gets, I don't know if he'll start at center back, but I think he's the center back of the future for the United States. So Kids has been calling that forever. Yeah, interesting, interesting lineup. I don't know if I've ever said that on the show. you said that at least to me. Interesting, uh, like you said, with the lineup. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's I was always interesting. I was listening to a, a podcast via ESPN, Big Head, Red Head. Taylor Tolman made a great point. Tim Howard is pr- probably the MVP of this team. Like, yes, where would you turn consistently. Oh, without yeah. him in yeah. your goal? And he's he's yep. old. He's like 35 yep. years old. Yep. Which for a goalie isn't that old. Yep. Because and he, then he brought up a great point. Backup goalkeeper. If Tim Howard got hurt, Brad Friedel, the 42 year old man yep. for Tottenham with the English accent. Yes. Your starting goalkeeper in the 2002 World Cup. Bring him back because Guzan, he, you know, he has some, some issues with Aston Villa. Well, that's not. I've, I've watched them play a few times. That's not it. Most of the time, it's not his fault. The defense in Aston Villa is. Yeah, Aston Villa's been on the decline in the East for a while. Uh, and then after that, it's just, a, it's just a whole crew of MLS guys. Sean Johnson, yeah. uh, Nick Romando. Well, pretty good prospect. And Romando's look decent when he's played. Bill so. Me, so. But after that, yeah. Not, not I just want to throw that shout out because I thought it was a great point from yep. Taylor Twelman. Uh, but like. You said lineup. I want to see the the center, the, the midfielders. Yeah, Jermaine Jones. If the Can't guys forget about Michael lineup, Bradley. Michael Probably Bradley, the best Michael American Bradley. player right yeah. now. If Jermaine Jones in the middle is starting, yeah. you're just like this guy's gonna get a yellow card, and then we're yeah. gonna have to. S- this guy's gonna get another Danny yellow card Williams next game. In there. Okay, so, but please I'm no Kyle looking, Beckerman. No Kyle Beckerman at all in this game. Yeah. Okay, I agree with you. But you're looking at a tough road contest to start this off, and then you have Mexico at home the second game. So you need at least. Uh, you need at least a result. And then yeah. soccer, a result means a draw. A draw at the very least. Because you don't want to start this off 0-1. Yeah. Yes. That'd be catastrophic. You, you want you want to get at least a tie, which is probably, I think, what's going to happen. U.S., last time they were in Honduras, sealed their route to the 2010 World Cup behind two goals from Connor Casey. Oh, the yeah, super I, sub. I no super idea. sub when I play FIFA World Cup. Scored both my winning goals as a super sub. When I played FIFA World Cup 2010, the two times I won the MVP is the 2010 MLS Cup. He's also Another involved, fun fact. and he also hasn't been called up. I'm pretty sure since that he's game. He's been pretty awful since that. He's been pretty awful. So yeah, just get a result here because this is a tough environment. Yep. It's it's tougher than you think. I mean, yeah. Ten games. Those central home, the trips to Central road. America tough. All the top tough. six teams are in tough. this tournament. I think top six teams yep. that Concacaf has yep. made it to this hexagonal. So get get at least a result here. Get at least a draw. Yeah. Let us get a win. Make us feel good. I think I think we got it. I think we got the win. Okay. Next topic. All right, Jared. So we got some allegations coming out this week. Surprise, surprise. Ray Lewis might be taking a little deer antler spray. Yeah. I don't know what deer antler spray does. I know it's got it's, something it's that's tough to banned. Think, like deer antler would help you do that. Yeah, anything. I mean, it, it's got a banned substance in it, so obviously... It's going to be a story, Super Bowl Media Week, because, let's be honest, Super Bowl Media Week, you're looking for stories everywhere. Dan Marino's Ill, uh, le- illegitimate love child is one of the big stories <laughs> really now. Funny the guy because, is, really funny because he's going to have like at least four hours of pregame he's got to be yeah. on, on this, uh, this Sunday. So they're, they're looking for anything they can get. There's not much you can really talk about in a full week of wall-to-wall coverage. Two Maybe, weeks. Yeah, it, it's overkill. Let's be honest. Then you have 12 hours of pregame. Stupid. I've always been on the show, PEDs. I'm not really a huge, you know, I don't really mind that much. 
Uh, I think if you get caught, you should get punished, but I'm not going to vilify you or anything. Obviously, everyone, Ray, you know, if you don't like Ray Lewis, you're going to bring up that, you're going to bring up the, the murder charge and all yeah. that stuff, and, and it is what it is. If you don't, uh, if you do like him, you're just going to say, you know, all right, what is deer antler spray? I think a lot of people, that's what a lot of people are saying right now. What is this stuff? All right, so it's my turn now? Yeah. Okay, so. That's why I stopped talking. Yeah, okay. Uh, Ray Lewis, you know, what do we what do we see in the trend with people accusing of PEDs? People who admit that they take them, we forgive. People yeah. that say they didn't, and they did, we don't like. Lance Armstrong last week, don't like him. Andy Pettit, five years ago, who cares? Yeah. So if Ray Lewis actually said he took this deer antler spray, which I think he did. Why do these allegations come up? Who would just make this stuff up? Yeah. I think he did. Just admit to it. You already you have four kids with six women, something like uh, six, six uh, six kids with four women or something. You have murder charges against you. We don't. This is the worst thing that's happened to you, pr pretty much. PED use. Every, it seems like everyone takes it. Just admit to it. We don't care if you did it. Really, you're still gonna be a hall of famer. You're still gonna win at least one Super Bowl MVP award. Could win another one. Submit to it. That's all I gotta say. I think he did it. Do you think he did it? Uh, yeah, probably. I yeah. Don't know. <laughs> Who? I don't know. Who cares? Next topic. All right, Warehouse Super Bowl week brings back Super Bowl memories. Your yep. favorite Super Bowl memory? It's gotta be the the first time the Pats won that Super Bowl, especially with that Ricky Pro touchdown, which was like when they score when the Rams scored there. Because what that you took were, three plays to go a, like fifty five yards, and it took it was a like close game. Seconds. It was a close game. And as a Pats fan, you still weren't sure. Even when we had that lead, it was, all right, we're up seven. But this this Rams team is really good. We're, the greatest we're, show on we're a big underdog in this game. Can we hold on in this uh, in this one? And they scored, and it was kind of like, okay, that's the watershed moment. Rams are going to win this football game. It's going to go to OT. That's going to be that. This is going to be awful. We get the rock back. Tom Brady, J.R. Redmond, just unbelievable drive. Field goal from Minitary. Great call from Gil Santos. Play, they play it all the time. You hear it all the time. One of the best calls in New England sports history. Just a great finish to that game and a great moment. And that's when the Pats were a lovable team in 2001. Oh, and now they've everyone gone. Jumped up I've never seen a franchise move that quickly from one end of the spectrum to the other where you love them. And then now everyone hates universally. Oh, hates yeah. The Pats, everyone. So. At least, least like team in sports. And sports. there's good reason to not like them, let's be honest. But just a great moment. That drive. It, it, it just coming after that touchdown and that quick drive from the Rams and that response, it was just unbelievable. And Tom Brady, not the same guy as he was in that game. I don't think I'll ever lead a drive like that ever again. Do you have a least favorite Super Bowl moment? No. Oh, it's got to be David Tyree's catch or something to do with that awfulness. Okay, so my favorite Super Bowl memory, like you said, Super Bowl 36 is my favorite game That okay. that's from the Super Bowl. But my memory is more, you know, it's not exactly the Super Bowl. It's waking up morning, Super Bowl Sunday, when I was a youngster, flipping on one of the t channels. It used to be on ESPN Classic, but that channel's stupid now. So they were playing the Super Bowl replays, like we said earlier. Yep. yep. The half-hour NFL film Super Bowl replays marathon gets you ready for the game. Let me yep. tell you. I still watch those things. Yep. Half hour, they're, they're you good. know, goes one to however many now, so one to 46. NFL Network did one last weekend because obviously they have pregame obligations that started Monday at 6 a.m. So you get the Super Bowl replays going, gets you amped for the games, you get the music going, you got John Facenda's voice in the background. Yep. Just great stuff. Yeah. Great stuff. And uh, that's just my favorite Super Bowl memories. Waking up, watching okay. them throughout the day. Okay. Great stuff. I can agree with that. I can tell you, I can tell you any Super Bowl MVP. It's great. You're good at bar trivia. Hey, bar Next trivia. Topic. Super Bowl trivia is my specialty. All right, we got the Super Bowl coming up on Sunday. What's your Super Bowl prediction? All right, uh, I don't really want either team to win, but I gotta go. I gotta pick somebody to win the game. Yeah. And I was gonna leave it tell everybody before, but with the Super Bowl prop bet, I'm going. It's gonna be fierce grape. Okay. Which is purple, which means okay. the Ravens. I'm sick of everyone jumping on the Niners bandwagon. Nobody cares about the Ravens. Everyone just loves the Niners because they're a team, exciting team with a good quarterback and a good defense and a coach who's, you know. It's a lot of good things you just good, listed off. A lot of reasons to like a team. Yeah, okay. <laughs> a lot of legitimate reasons. I'm just sick of everyone there. jumping on board. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go Ravens in this game. Want, want me to give my score? Yeah, go ahead. It's going uh, to be 23-21. Okay. 23-21. to 21. Okay. We're going to get a dramatic field goal. 
Under a minute left. Not going to be like the vanity, I feel, yep. though. Justin Tucker, 37 yards from the left hash. Okay. That's very specific there. I didn't, I didn't even give you a reason why I think the Ravens are going to win. I just told you the score. Okay. Yeah, that if you want to you wanna give us a reason uh, or... I think, I think Kaepernick's going to throw a couple picks. Okay. Hopefully Ray Lewis or Terrell Suggs catches neither. Yep. And um, the Ravens' offense will be decent. They'll, they'll get some good drives going, some some poor drives. They'll get, you know, 23 points. That's all i got to tell you. Okay. <laughs> i got no good analysis for this game whatsoever. I can't root for Terrell Suggs in anything. Yeah, it's simple as that. I'm, so I'm going, going for the Ravens. I'm going Niners. Just, well, well, I, I can't pick them. The I can't pick them. Oh, yeah. Can't pick them. Can't say that I want them to win anything that he's involved in. So i got to go Niners. Is it risky having a young quarterback like Kaepernick in this game? For sure. But if things do get shaky, you can say, all right, let's settle it down. Let's run the rock. Because Frank is a great, he's a great running back. Give the ball to 21. Michael Crabtree's been better. Actually been a pretty good receiver since Kaepernick took over. Poised to have a pretty good year next year as well. Could establish himself as, he, he won't be a top five receiver, but it'll be a nice, nice receiver to go. That's a good number one receiver, which I didn't think the 49ers had coming into this year. Maybe that's Alex Smith's fault. But, so they got, and plus you got Vernon Davis, great tight end. You got a pretty good defense. I don't know if Justin Smith is going to play in this game or not. I heard rumors that he might try. He, he'll if you're, probably if, try. Yeah, I think he will try to play. I think any guy would in his situation. How effective will he be? Who knows? But if Alden Smith can get after Joe Flacco, you know he's going to make a mistake or two. So, both pretty, you know, a slight, or not a slight experience, but definitely an experience edge to Flacco. But I think... In terms of talent and ability, got to go Kaepernick. Huge edge, a huge edge over Flacco. So I'm taking the Niners, low scoring, 21, or I'll go 2017 Niners. See, I'm going low scoring too. Yeah, 20, 23. Most 20. Super Bowls have been lately have been pretty low scoring. Yeah, well, so. I mean, it was 31 25 two years ago, 31 17 the year before that. Yeah, it's been it's been average scoring 20s. Yeah. you know. I'm going low scoring here. Keep it in the 20s. Time right. for our last topic last here. Last topic, Warehouse. We got Beyonce, and she'll probably bring out all her friends. We got Destiny's Child, supposedly coming. Jay-Z, obviously, will come out. Uh, we'll probably get anybody you can name, really, at the Super Bowl halftime. But Beyonce's the headliner. I'm not excited about it. I don't know about you, but who no. do you want, if you could choose that Super Bowl halftime show, who are you choosing? I'm going no musical guests whatsoever. Send it to the desk and let those guys talk. For 30 minutes. Those guys can do it. You, you get good analysts on CBS, on NFL Network. All these all these places have great analysts. Put them on screen. Do what ESPN did for the BCS where they brought out every guy who, who had talked about college football in the season. They had about seven desks inside <laughs> inside that stadium ready to talk about the, the that uh, no, uh, national championship game. So get your big guns out. Put them, uh, put them right on the sideline. Let them go at it for 30 minutes. Break down the game. Give us some stuff. We uh, Some of the little things that we don't see on the field. Break down some plays. That's the kind of stuff I like. I really don't care about Beyonce. This is halftime. Go get your grub. Go take a bathroom break. Anything but actually watch the halftime show. That's who, my point. Who, who you got as your special guest analyst? Because you know they bring back the players. Who, who you got Ooh. saying that they're going to bring as a uh, player guest analyst? Well, I would like to see them get a guy like Tom Brady, who usually, as soon as the season's over, disappears, disappears from media attention. So if you've got a guy like that, it would be interesting to see him actually talk on camera on a, in a live situation. Yeah. It, very what, is see him, what is he going to do? Very see retires? him rarely on live TV. He will certainly, he doesn't have to do anything. Giselle's, no, but, no, Giselle's but, like, got a ton of money. What's he like? He's not going to be an analyst. He's not gonna yeah, he can just sit on, he can sit on his and Giselle's money for until he dies. Yes. And... You can make appearances or something. It's like little Give stuff speeches. like that. Like, let's yeah. pay him twenty five thousand dollars. But he, he's speech. not. He's not. When you hear him talk, he's not really like a really elegant speaker to begin with. Like, no, so he's got some elegance to him. Uh, he's I a good speaker. He's I, a, he's I well disagree. Spoken. I think he's I well spoken. Strong. I think he's awful. Um, I, I disagree. He can work on it. Give him a speech yeah, coach. Yeah, probably not. He's, he'll, he'll you know probably, do you think I'll write a tell all book? Uh, probably. He doesn't seem like that time we got. No. My my analyst so uh, Pete Mang, humor. Yeah, well spoken. Oh, knows the Lincoln side out. Oh, yeah. The, the <laughs> offer for him in, to be a caller guy is going to be through the roof. Oh. Through the roof. Guy is, can walk off spin, the field. He can spin the wheel. He can walk off the field right now. The only, I think the only person he couldn't boot would be John Gruden. But I think other than that, the the, the it would be an unbelievable, the networks are going to unbelievable go feed. Unbelievably balls to the yep. wall for a guy like Peyton Manning. Yep. Um. So love to see him kick Phil Sims out of there. That would be excellent. 
Nancy, 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 Nancy Manning, you already see him on the Papa John's commercial? Yeah. You got a little report? Put him in the booth. Throw him some Zod in the studio? Yeah. <laughs> that would be excellent. All right, so my Super Bowl halftime show, I'm, I'm not a fan of these these gigs that they get. Now. Terrible. I, I, I threw up the graphic, Tom Petty. Great halftime show, for my opinion. But all these other guys, Bruce Springsteen was good. The Who, awful. Yeah. The Who is a band of four people. Turns out we got two guys. Yeah. And the fun, Super Bowl fun fact for you, Pete Townsend, the uh, member of The Who, He's a sort of been a pedophile. He had to send a note out to every everybody who lived within two miles of Sunlight Stadium, telling him he's a sex offender. Super Bowl okay. fun fact for you. Uh, before you can do the halftime show, Prince, awful. Rolling Stones, this is in Detroit, awful. Yep. Uh, Paul McCartney wasn't a fan of it. Black Eyed Peas. Yeah. Black Eyed Peas and Madonna wasn't a, wasn't looking forward to either of them, but the theatrics of it, the Tron Legacy. Theme yeah. To the Black Eyed Peas, I I enjoyed. And the, what the, I what great Madonna was when she got carried out by like those I like the uh, people. The the tight wire bungee guy from last year. He was on like that bungee, that one wire, and he was like doing flips and stuff. It was weird. I don't remember that, but it was but pretty it sounds awesome. awesome. Yeah. Uh, that but, was good. Yeah. Awesome fro like. The good fro thing, action. The good too. thing about Tom Petty was he didn't bring any of these other acts on. Last yeah. year, CeeLo Green, MIA, who pretty much stole the show because he flipped off the cameras. Yeah. Who else was with him? I don't remember. I didn't watch it. it, it was, other than that it. guy. I you, saw that. You didn't see the theatrics? I, no. All the guys? No, I told you. I'm a bad You didn't see all the guys shirtless I get food. With, their, with their pecs hanging out? I get food. I think Ryan Eaton was out there. I get food one of those guys. at halftime. Pecs. So, um, yeah, so if I had to choose, you know, I'm a guy who likes his music. I'm a music listener. We all are, I think. Yeah, I, I think it's universal. And I like different genres of music. Okay. And somebody who I know can do different genres of music is the Notre Dame marching band. Oh, Chasing my the sun. God. Some nights. Wow. All the NFL, all the old school NFL films music. I'm sure they can handle that. Bring out the Notre Dame yeah, marching there's band. No need to that is a, the best marching band. I'm pretty sure if you're from Notre Dame at this point after that national championship game, you shouldn't go anywhere near a public television. You got to admit, camera, you gotta admit just, your favorite part about Notre Dame is their marching band. Just be... Uh, my favorite part about Notre Dame is touchdown Jesus. That's the only thing I do respect about Notre Dame. Everything else, hate it. But if you're from Notre Dame, you should probably go to hiding for a Southern little bit. Nights. Until Skylar Diggins probably Chasing was a national sun, championship this year. Call Me Maybe. Uh, they, they got any any song you can think of. Not Send the best. Way. Not the best band in the nation. Best marching band in the nation, Oklahoma State. Ah. Do, do they have their own uh, thing on iTunes? Because Notre Dame Marching Band I'm does. pretty sure they do. Well, they have stuff on YouTube, which is phenomenal. Thriller, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay. Give me the Notre Dame bar- Marching Band at Super Bowl halftime. Look at all these theatrics. You know, the first Super Bowl halftime show, do you know who it was? No. Super Bowl fun fact for you, the Michigan, Michigan Marching yep, Band. Yep, it was Michigan. Yep. Bring back the old tradition. Super Bowl one. Yeah, bring Michigan again. I won't bring Notre Dame. Bring Notre Dame. That's all we got for you once again. Went through 10 topics today. I want to thank Tom Lima, Sam Allen, Everton Carter for coming here, helping out behind the scenes. That's all we got for you. Uh, go USA. That's a USA great point. Soccer. Go USA. Go USA, USMNT. Tip your waiters. See you guys later. Sam, fade us out. I did. It won't fade. This hair goes with this hat Here so we go. Well.